This video is just a very quick rundown on how to use the settings options on the POC 200, which is with the POS 180. Um, you have two, when you open the tool, you have two ways to set some settings. And the first one is when you turn it on, and let's say you're just ready to use it, you just want to check to make sure everything's good to go. That's this button up here, top right. It's your preferences and settings button. Um, on the very top, you have prism slash your direct read, and you want to set it to basically, do you want it to automatically find your prism when it turns on? Do you want it, do you want to move it yourself to try to find the prism, or do you want to have it on direct read? Do you want to have in direct read mode? So if you're in prism manual, and you want to have it find the prism, you have to turn it yourself. If you're in prism auto, when you uh, go to find the prism, it actually starts searching with the parameters that you set. Um, both are fine, but most people, people keep it on prism auto because it's easy. If you're far away, the tool will start searching for you automatically. And then direct read, when you press that, it says safety warning, the laser's going on. And you can see that once I say okay, on the top, laser beam's now shooting. And my, I don't know if you can see it from here, but the uh, 180 now has a um, laser beam shooting out instead of looking for a prism. So I'll go ahead and turn that off, go back to prism auto, and notice that the prism just went back. So that's a quick way that you, that's, a, that's one of the ways that you can adjust your prism settings, okay? Uh, your guide light, um, I'll let you look at the 180 right now, the guide light's off, but if I go to normal, notice the guide light's now blinking. If I go to fast, it's now blinking fast. And if I go to auto, it'll blink until it finds the, uh, the prism. But I, I, I usually keep that off, and then when I uh, go to find the prism, it uh, kind of turns on for me automatically and it looks for me. But I, I just keep the guide light off so I don't have to see it when I'm already connected. And after I do this, I'll show you how to find the prism if you're, if you're far away. Uh, the B light, that's your brightness. Just adjust it up and down to make the screen go brighter or less bright. All right, and the compensator, you usually want that turned on, so do not click compensator turned off. That basically adjusts the level of the tool when there's a lot of wind blowing um, or vibration on the on the uh, surface that the tool's on. So usually keep that checked off so that the compensator is on when it's, uh, when it's working. Uh, and real quick, let's say that you do lose contact with the prism. This button over here, this locator button, once you turn that on, once I press that, Notice my tool, you can't see it from here, but it's moving up and down, left and right, trying to find my prism. All right, it automatically starts searching. That's because I have prism auto. Um, but let's say that uh, I want to turn it. I can use these joysticks to move my, my unit left and right, up and down, or I can use my D-pad, which is over here on the top right. Um, I even can use my GPS search if I wanted to, or if I had a CAD file, I can say, hey, turn to a specific, specific, specific point, it will turn to that point, and if I'm there, it's a lot easier to find me. So those are the finding prism settings, okay? Um, but I'm gonna go back into preferences. So here we have all the prism, the prism, the guide light, the brightness of the tablet, and the compensator information. And then you have level. All right, this will actually show you the level of the tool to make sure you're level. You cannot adjust this here. You have to actually be back at the tool to adjust it. I'm good. If I wanted to, this laser beam basically shows the laser beam that's pointing from the bottom of the tool down to the ground. It's your plumb laser. Um, you adjust that brightness here. Um, the radio, adjust your radio settings. If you uh, want to make sure you're connected, just make sure you have, I think it's one through 20, let's see how many, you have one through 30 stations. I'm on channel three and I'm connected, but if you ever need to change that, or you need to turn the station, the radio off, you do that right there in the radio settings. And then PPM is your, I, th I believe PPM stands for parts per million. It's basically your settings where you can set the air temperature and the weather that you're working in. Um, cur currently it's, uh, honestly to get this information, you just go to the weather channel, figure out what your inches of mercury are. Um, I think there's other options too. Um, in America, a lot of people use this inches of mercury, which I have it set to, but uh, you have other options as well. But I say, okay, I know that the weather, according to the weather channel, at this time is about 30 inches mercury. And then I, cho I choose to use Fahrenheit. You obviously can use Celsius as well, but it is currently actually, it's actually closer to 55 degrees right now inside in the area that I'm at. And this is just telling the tool what kind of weather conditions we're working in so it knows kind of what it's shooting through. And then it adjusts your parts per million that way. This is just to keep the tool accurate. A lot of people sometimes have it set on summer settings while they're working in the winter. It gives them some accuracy issues. It's nice to just set this and be as close as you can whenever you're using the tool. So that's the, the configuration screen. Again, to get there, you just go from the uh, home page or from whatever page, just go to the top right corner, press the preferences, and here it goes, all right? 
Now the other settings, notice at the very bottom, this is regardless of what file you have open, but the config button. This is where you can configure, configure your tool. It has a lot of different options on here. Let's go ahead and start with the settings tab. The settings is just how you want to look at the screen and kind of the information that you have, uh, kind of regarding the information of the kind of files you're gonna be using. In America, uh, the coordinate display is always gonna be northern eastern height, almost always. Um, if it's not, you can change it to ENH and EH, um, just your different, different, your different options. We always use NEH, um, ENH would be the other option normally, and that's just depending on the kind of file you're using. Decimal format, we have it to the thousands. Then we have the degrees, minutes, seconds for our angle. I have no idea if you're ever gonna use G-O-N, uh, I, I think that stands for gradient. Um, then your angle resolution is to the second. We could do it to the 10 second, but we have it to the second. Our distance units, we have feet and inches to the 16th. We could change that to uh, something else. I think we can change it to, yeah, millimeters, centimeters, and meters, depending on what you're using. Obviously in America, we choose feet, and I wanna go to the 16th of an inch. I go more. Um, our VA0, that's when you're using the theodolite function or whatever functions you're using for your angle. You want, do you want your vertical angle to start zero at the very, when it's pointing directly upwards, or do you rather prefer it to start at what the horizon where zero is when it's pointing directly at the horizon at the 90 degree angle? It uh, doesn't matter, but uh, I, I usually keep it at the zenith, so I know that when I'm pointing straight up, the tool should be reading vertical angle equals zero. Beeping, that's just the sound of the tool. I usually have that on. My language is obviously English. You have a lot of different languages in here that you could choose from. Chinese is not one of them, but uh, most of the common ones are in here. Uh, layout tolerance, we have it to an inch, and what that basically is is when you want the tool to turn green to make you feel good that you're getting close. I have that to an inch. You can go as low as you want, uh, I believe, to the quarter inch. Uh, but again, layout tolerance, that does not mean that the tool will tell you that you're okay. It'll just turn green when you're within an inch to make you feel better as you're getting closer and closer to your point. The tool will still tell you exactly how close you are to the point to the 16th of an inch. And then P-Line Select, I'm not really sure what that means, but I usually keep it a P-Line slash segment. Um, but I believe that means that when you have your CAD file open, do you want to do you want to just, when you, when you that has to do with when you're selecting certain lines or certain certain distinct things in your CAD file that's on the tool. Do you want it, how, how you want to select it? And you obviously, most people want to be able to select the lines, the lines that are in there. I apologize that I don't have more information about that, but I think that this uh, video will be helpful to you anyway. All right, so that's the settings. All right, now let's go to calibration. I'm not going to perform a calibration right now, but this is basically, you can do this on your own. It won't hurt you to do this but it actually leads you through how to do this. When you, if you ever want to calibrate to see how to check yourself and to make sure the tool knows what it's looking at, you just go to new and you simply follow the instructions. You use the crosshairs to very accurately cite the target about 30 to 50 meters away um, and make sure that you're horizontal, you're, you're within about five degrees of 90. Um, finish H and V coal. So here's your H coal and then you do a V coal and then you do a P track, which is your prism. And you do all of those, do it just whatever the screen is telling you to do to perform your 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 calibration and then once you do it it'll come up with this information and it'll let you know exactly how far off via I, I believe by the angle I think these are seconds of an angle you are so you, you know so it, it, it'll be able to calibrate itself it's it's a good way to, that you can just check you can see how calibrated you are and again the machine you can send it back to Hilti depending on when you bought it sometimes for free sometimes for a charge to get recalibrated where we can do our own calibration which is obviously much more advanced than what this would be so again, feel free to always do a calibration to just check yourself. System info just tells you the tool you're using, the software that's on it. Um, this information, you might not understand at all. This is more for our, for Hilti's uh, knowledge. Then search target. Search target, this is when, uh, let's say you lose the target and you want the tool to start finding you again. This is where you say, okay, when you lose when you lose lock, when the let's say you go behind a column and the, and the tool lost you for a second, you can tell it to either stop or to predict predict the direction you're already going. So it'll kind of I I keep it a prediction so that let's say I'm moving around this column, the tool will just assume that I'm walking behind it and should keep following me at the speed that I was going, and usually it keeps locked right on me. So I usually keep that a prediction. If you prefer not to, you can stop. You can say just stop. Time prediction, how long do you want to keep turning before it just gives up? I have it set to five seconds, maybe I'll set that to three seconds, because if it doesn't find you within three seconds, it's usually a lost cause and you gotta refine it anyway. But you have a, 
you have a you know you can have a time prediction there one second two second three second five seconds of how long it's trying to find you and follow you before it just gives up um now the search sector this is when you you do sort of try to have the tool find you while you're away uh let's say that it's lost you and you say okay find me what it's going to do is at the position that's pointed it's going to go horizontally within 10 degrees left and right and vertically within 20 degrees up and down that's my settings but you can change that to whatever you want i believe you can go up to 90 i can't remember exactly i'm having trouble here I'm scrolling down i'll let you guys play with it but you have you can basically go i'm assuming you can go up to 90 i wish my there we go yep you can go all the way up to 90 um but again it's really not that sm unless you're really far away and you really don't want to have somebody sight you in if you can't find you um you know you could do 90 to 90 and it'll eventually find you but if it doesn't find you in a little bit that's when you go to the search button and you just move it yourself using the guide light to find you it's just easier that way enable gps that's if you want to use uh the, the the radio because it's using radio technology and the tablet itself we can the tool can actually find the tablet via gps and so i usually have gps enabled on so that if worse comes to worse i can just say turn it to my gps signal it'll turn to turn my general area it'll be easier for the tool to find me that way so that's search parameters next is your assign f1 f2 um, this is uh, basically how you want to use the f1 f2 button right here as quick keys all right so i have mine set right now as f1 is my uh, notice at the top allows me to toggle between prism mode and uh, laser mode. It's just a quick way to just change that. Let me get out of here. All right, my F2 key is my, just quickly say, select prism type. So I can just quickly, let's say I change prisms from uh, the one I'm using now, which is the 360 prism, to a sliding prism or even a reflector tape. I can just press F2 really quick and it's quickly select it. It's just easier for me to press that button than press up here, which if you notice, I press up here, it does the same thing. It pulls up the same menu, right? It's just easier for me to press F2, all right? But there's other options a lot of people use um, to turn the guide light on, to measure, to, to use as the measuring button. Instead of pressing measure on the screen, they can press F1 to measure. Um, a lot of different options. Uh, you can play with it. It's just whatever your preference is. But again, most people just keep it to these two because when they're going back and forth between applications, these are the most common it's either, I would say the most common is toggle prism and direct read pointer. That's that's almost always on everybody. Then the second one is almost either select prism type or the measure button. Because those those three actions are the most common things people use, which is what you want the F1, F2 to be. Okay? EDM target, that is just your default EDM, meaning when you uh, have a target on there, you obviously want it to auto lock onto it. That means that once you once you open the tool, it's going to automatically start searching for your prism. That's what I have it set at. And of course, my default target, whenever I use a prism, it defaults at 360 degrees standard. That's the most common um, That's the most common prism I use, so I just have that at my default. If I wanted to change that, I could right here, but I don't need to because that I almost always start with this 360 standard prism. All right? That is basically your default settings of when you turn the tool on. You want it to always be on auto lock and you always want it to set at the uh, 360 degree prism. And uh, that way you can always know what you uh, start out with. Radio connect, that's when uh, if you uh, don't, rather than using the settings up here, let's say you want to come into config, use radio connect here, you can actually adjust the settings here as well. Just another option for you to change your radio settings. <clears throat> and then your keyboard. Um, what language you want to use. Do you want it to be a bright keyboard or do you want it to be a dark keyboard? And then do you want your sound so it clicks when you when you type or not? So those are your settings. I think that that might be helpful for you. Um, it's just nice to make sure that you can do that. But just to recap, when you turn on the tool, you want to just do a quick check. That's where you press the settings up here. Make sure your level, make sure you're on the right radio station, make sure your weather settings are correct. And then for everything else that's less common, go to config. And here you go with some more general settings.